good evening welcome back so now we are going to start with a new session of mbbs students nursing students and paramedical students 2024 batch so after a long gap of 3 months i'm again starting with uh, video lectures so in this lecture we'll have a quick review of histology of epithelial tissue very simple basics so before going to epithelial tissue let us define what is tissue tissue is a aggregation of group of cells which performs one or more specific functions so there are four basic types of tissues epithelial tissue epithelial tissue is a layer of cells resting on basement membrane and covers the surfaces both internal and external connective tissue name itself speaks it supports other tissue or connects other tissues specialized connective tissue examples are bone blood and cartilage muscular tissue the speciality with the muscle tissue is it is contractile and causes movement nervous tissue it is made up of cells which have the property of excitability and conduction epithelial tissue as i defined earlier a layer of cells resting on basement membrane covering the surfaces one of the basic tissues of the body features are layer of cells which covers the surfaces it's a vascular tissue rests on basement membrane cells shows junctions with adjacent cells and basement membrane isolate deeper structures from the surface or from the lumen especially in git and urinary tract shows surface modifications like microvilli example intestinal epithelium increases the surface area for absorption undergo mitosis and replace damaged cells functions protection for example you can see the epidermis of skin mechanical barrier skin and lumen of git urinary tract absorption in gastrointestinal tract secretion or excretion salivary glands red glands then uh, sensory perception in the tongue taste buds olfactory epithelium the smell so shapes of epithelial cells so in section they are seen as squamous cells cuboidal cells columnar cells but if you see the epithelium from the surface view they appear polygonal or irregular epithelial cells have the following domains the basal domain apical domain and lateral domain so basal domain is in contact with the basement membrane or with the deeper cells apical domain faces external environment or luminal contents lateral surface or lateral domain forms junctional complexes with adjacent cells now let us classify epithelium according to layers so if we see single layer of cells we call it as simple epithelium if we see two or more layers of cells we call it as stratified epithelium and if the layer of cells are actually only one but still they appear as multiple layers so that kind of epithelium is called as pseudo stratified which is especially seen in case of respiratory tract then transitional epithelium so example is urethelium so name transitional speaks that the epithelium in uh, urinary bladder if we see when the urinary bladder is relaxed so there will be three to four layers of cells which appear but when it is stretched with the accumulation of urine they will become two layers so there is a transition in the number of layers so such kind of epithelium is transitional epithelium you can see here this is the apical domain this is the lateral domain and this is the basal domain so simple epithelium is classified into simple squamous epithelium simple cuboidal epithelium and simple columnar epithelium so simple squamous epithelium examples are endothelium and mesothelium you can see the flattened cells on the section not from the surface on the surface they are appearing like polygonal but if you see the sections they are flat squamous cells with elongated nucleus you can see the endothelium of blood vessels you can also see the lung alveoli where there is squamous epithelium so this is the bowman's space renal capsule you can see here simple squamous epithelium So simple cuboidal epithelium 
So on the cut section, you are seeing the cuboidal in shape. You can see here intercalated ductus salivary gland lined by cuboidal epithelium. You can see the thyroid follicle lined by cuboidal epithelium. You can see here follicles of the thyroid and ovary epithelium. So here you can see the single layer of cuboidal cells. Simple columnar epithelium, stomach, intestine, uterus, gallbladder. So at these areas you will find simple columnar epithelium. You can see here these are the columnar cells with vertically elongated nucleus. So this is the pseudo stratified epithelium, trachea, epididymis, ductus deferens, auditated tube. These are the areas where you find pseudo stratified epithelium. You can see here, actually there is only one layer of cells, but few cells are failing to reach to the surface. And you can see, this is appearing like there are two layers of nuclei, though there is only one layer of cells. So that is why this is pseudo stratified, false stratification. So you can see pseudo stratified epithelium with cilia, respiratory epithelium, you can see pseudo stratified epithelium with stereocilia in epididymis. So it is a pseudo stratified columnar epithelium in the respiratory tract with the cilia. Then stratified epithelium, stratified squamous epithelium, again it is divided into keratinized and non-keratinized, stratified cuboidal epithelium, stratified columnar epithelium. You can see here, so this is a non-keratinized stratified squamous epithelium. So the keratin layer is minimal or absent. Here if you can see, keratinized stratified squamous epithelium, the keratin layer is abundant. So that's why this is non-keratinized stratified squamous epithelium and this is keratinized stratified squamous epithelium. So stratified epithelium. It is basically into stratified squamous, stratified cuboidal and stratified columnar. So stratified squamous is again subclassified into keratinized and non-keratinized. So keratinized stratified squamous epithelium, multiple layers cells are present, basal cells are cuboidal, superficial cells are flat. So stratified corneum non-nucleated dead cell layer is present, the example skin. So non-keratinized stratified squamous epithelium, again multiple layers are there, basal cells are cuboidal and superficial cells are flattened and nucleated. So there is no keratin. Example oral cavity, esophagus, vagina, anal canal, ocal folds and cornea. So stratified cuboidal epithelium. It is two cell layer thick. Superficial cells are cuboidal and then it is seen in ducts of sweat and salivary glands. Then stratified columnar epithelium. Again two cell layer thick. Superficial cells are columnar. Example ducts of some glands, phonics of conjunctiva and cavernous urethra. You can see here non keratinized stratford squamous epithelium, and this is the keratinized stratford squamous epithelium. You can see the extent of keratinization here. So, stratford cuboidal epithelium, and this is the stratford columnar epithelium. So in stratified cuboidal epithelium, superficial cells are cuboidal. In stratified columnar epithelium, superficial cells are columnar. So transitional epithelium, you can see here the superficial umbrella shaped cells. This is the characteristic of the urothelium. So these are the number of layers where it is observed when the urinary bladder is in contracted state but when the bladder is stretched out the number of layers will reduce to two layers or three layers so there is a transition between the number of layers so transitional epithelium so this superficial cells will form a protective covering on the luminal surface to protect the interstitium of bladder from the concentrated urine. 
the transitional epithelium. Cell layer, it's multi-layered, the empty bladder 5 to 6 layer and distended bladder 2 to 3 layers. So basal cells are cuboidal, superficial cells are umbrella shaped and few cells may be binucleated. So there are tight cell junctions and they also form a plaque with the help of intramembranous glycoproteins to form a protective barrier. So functions barrier and protection. Locations renal calyces, renal pelvis, ureter, urinary bladder, and part of the urethra. So basement membrane. It has two parts: basal lamina and reticular lamina. So basal lamina is again having two parts: lamina lucida. It does not show any features. Consists of few fine type four collagen fibrils and amorphous matrix. Lamina densa consists of dense network of type four collagen fibers. So reticular lamina, so it's a deeper layer, lies adjacent to deeper connective tissue, contains reticular fibers and type 7 collagen fibers. Functions, support, anchoring, barrier, regeneration after injury. So you can see here, these are the cells, this is the basal domain of the cell. And you can see this is the lamina lucida, this is the lamina densa, this is the reticular lamina, these two together called as basal lamina. So overall, epithelium, simple epithelium, simple spammer, simple cuboidal, simple columnar, pseudo stratified columnar epithelium, stratified epithelium, stratified spammers, keratinized and non-keratinized, stratified cuboidal, stratified columnar and transitional epithelium. Thank you.